So boys, we are back with some more Madden NFL 19 franchise mode. And today, we take a look at this divisional matchup against the Saints because we won that wildcard game against the Packers, a very close game at Lambeau Field. We came up with the W. Another thing on the agenda, though, before we do anything else, is taking a look at our upgrades. So Drew Brees and the Saints, going to be a very tough matchup as Drew Brees is one of the best quarterbacks. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks, obviously. But right now... Very crucial thing to note, Darius Guy's superstar development, and he is not injured this week. So Darius Guy's is going to be a monster in the next couple of years. Remember that, Darius Guy's superstar development. This dude had star development before, so his XP this week, or this year overall, is insane. He is doing awesome. So right now, we'll go and go to defense. As we take a look, as Devin White has an upgrade, we'll go and upgrade him right now. Field General, it's the best overall thing to upgrade for our scheme. And he is now an 80 overall, so it's not bad. 80 overall, middle linebacker Devin White, is his development still the same? And it is, still quick development. Matthew Ioannidis, 81 overall, he has an upgrade as well, so we'll go and upgrade Matthew Ioannidis. We'll upgrade his Speed Rusher, as he's still now an 81 overall. We want to kind of upgrade him overall as a player, not just focus on one single category. So we'll go... Do the speed rushing. Anybody else doesn't literally look like it. Uh, I think we're about good for that. Oh, Abraham. That's right. Jonathan Abraham. That's right. So, run and support, hybrid, or zone. We'll do zone. And now he's a 77 overall. Kind of becoming a good overall kind of player around here with his stats. And who else do we have? Any backups? Lewis, Pratt. No, nothing there. Offensively, any backup offensive lineman maybe? Warmack, nothing there. Michael Jordan's still out. No Davis. Nothing there. No running backs. Oh, we have one for Jeremy Hill while he's injured. Well, might as well just do that. We'll upgrade his elusive back. There he goes. Out one more week. So if we win this game against the Saints, he will be available for that possibly conference championship for the NFC. You never know. And for the rest, I think we're good for upgrades. So. Darius Geis, superstar development, 82 overall. This man is going to be very exciting to watch the next couple of years with what he's doing on the football field. So it's so awesome that now Darius Geis, like I said many times before, superstar development, 82 overall. I didn't even imagine that he'd actually do this this year. So very good seeing Darius Geis upgrade as now his development rate was increased to superstar development after last week. So very good week overall for the Redskins organization. Now running back. Looks to be a superstar for years to come after that performance last week by the team. But anyway, we'll take a look at what went wrong for each individual team last week and see how they lost, basically, because the matchups Jaguars, Cha Chargers, Cowboys, Eagles, Steelers, Bills, Redskins, Saints. And as for wildcard, we have Titans and Steelers. Steelers won 28-7. I'll take a look at that one first. So Big Ben won against Marcus Mariota. Four touchdown passes to Mariota's one and two. As Mariota did not play well at all. I want to see his passing rating or his uh, completion percentage. 43, kind of in the toilet there. Rushing-wise, Le'Veon Bell, 99. Robert Kelly, 42 and 34 for Deion Lewis. And receiving yards-wise, we had 61 was the top, and that was Smith by the Titans. 56 for Vance McDonald. 40 for Rashard Matthews and a touchdown for the Titans and Robert Kelly 38 and two touchdown passes not bad for or two touchdowns for Robert Kelly not bad then blocking wise we have one sack led up by Lewin and one by Jack Conklin defensively 12 tackles for Cripian 11 for Malcolm Butler I forgot he's on the Titans but uh sacks wise one for Bud Dupree and one for TJ Watt I wonder what overall Watt is right now I'm gonna check that out too interceptions wise one for Artie Burns and one for Corey Moore Kicking-wise, we had one missed field goal by Goskowski, but it didn't really matter. Punting-wise, there it is. Kick return-wise, nothing much. And same with punting. Then for Dallas and Arizona, Dallas came up with a W, a three-point W there, 17-14. As Dak Prescott, not that good of a game, 169, one touchdown, one interception. And Sam Bradford, not that much better either, 188 and a touchdown. And passing rating-wise, or passing completion-wise, 45 and 42, not that good. Rushing-wise, Zeke was a big reason why. 151 on the ground, an 8.4 average yards per carry, and a touchdown. 73 for Alex Collins, and so on. David Johnson only at 41. Not, not good at all for his standards, but uh, 
Receiving yards wise, 56 for JJ Nelson, 44 for Zeke. So Zeke just took over in this game. 36 for John Brown and a touchdown. And that's pretty much it besides Jermaine Gresham at a 10 and a touchdown. Blocking wise, we had a couple sacks led up by Travis Frederick. Wow. Uh, two by Tyler Lawson, Erlerson, two, one by DJ Humphreys, and one by Richie Incognito. And just speaking about Richie Incognito, thank God we got rid of him because that guy is a psycho. Like, have you seen the news about him? <laughs> this is really just a very odd guy, very odd fella. But anyway, regardless, Dion Buchanan, 12 tackles on there, 10 for Sean Lee. Then sacks-wise, two sacks for Robert, one for by David Irving, one by Collins, one by Russell, half a sack for Sean Lee and Charlton. Interceptions-wise, we had one by Patrick Peterson, and that's about it. Kicking-wise, one for one for Aldrich. Punting-wise, nothing much there. Kick return-wise, nothing much there. And same with punt return-wise. Then Chiefs and Jags, 21-16 in final in favor for the Jags. After, I guess, Patrick Mahomes, not that ready, I guess. As he had 2-11 and touchdown pass, but not as good as Blake Bortles, the GOAT himself. 345, two touchdown passes, one interception, and a 107.3 passing rating. Great game in a Blake Bortles and a 74% pass completion percentage. Then rushing-wise, Leonard Fournette, 115 and a touchdown. Good game for him. As for Jalen Richard, 14 and a touchdown, not that good. Receiving yards-wise, huge game for Austin, Safari, and Jenkins. As he had 143 on 8 receptions, he had Tyree Kill at 104 on 6 receptions and a touchdown, 80 for Marquise Lee and a touchdown, and so on down that list. Oh yeah, and 3 for Arma and a touchdown, if that really matters. Blocking wise, he had 3 sacks lit up by Lane Taylor, 1 by Jeremy Parnell. Defensively, 18 tackles for Anthony Hitchens, wow, that is a lot of tackles. 10 for Trey Boston and a sack. Then, sacks wise, we had... One sack from Trey, one sack from Lee Jackson, one from Yannick, and one from Calais. Then interceptions-wise, one interception for Eric Berry. And then kicking-wise, one for two for Harrison Butker. Probably probably should have made that one, but uh, then we had 0 for 1 for Steven Hauschka. Then putt return-wise, we had 222 for Dustin Colquitt. Pretty good right there. Kick return-wise, nothing much there, and no otherwise, nothing much there. So we have the Jags winning, we had us winning, we had Dallas winning, and Pittsburgh winning. New matchups, like I said before, Jags, Chargers, Cowboys, Eagles, Steelers, Bills, and Redskins, and Saints. We'll do some scouting pretty much on the Saints, see what kind of a team they really are, see what's on their offense. We'll go by the depth chart just right now and see what's kind of, how is it working over there in New Orleans? I know they have Drew Brees still a quarterback. Maybe he might be a free agent next year. A little birdie tells me he could be a free agent, so you never know. You never just never know. But Drew Brees, 87 overall. Backup is Brock Osweiler. It's a very good insurance policy. But uh, Alvin Kamara, 92 overall. Very good right there. And 80 overall for LeGarrette Blunt as a backup. And Marshawn Lynch, too. I forgot about that. So Marshawn and LeGarrette Blunt, not that bad of a combo for the backup running backs. But fullback wise, there's Zach Line, one of the better running or fullbacks I've seen in the game. Wide receiver wise, the 95 overall Michael Thomas, 86 overall Cameron Meredith, 75 overall Trey Quan Smith, and so on. And then tight end wise, 81 overall Josh Hill, and then a backup 75 overall Davis. Left tackle, they have Taron Armstead, 83 overall. Left guard, you have Andreas Andrews Pate at a 73. Center, they have Max Unger at a 77. Right guard, they have a 78 overall Larry Forward or Warford. 88 overall Ryan Ramsik at 88. Then left end, we have Cameron Jordan, 95 overall. Then right end, we have 81 overall Alex Okafor. D tackle, they have Rankins and Davison, 82 or 84, 82. And an 82 overall David Onyemata. He's actually looking not that bad though. Maybe we might be able to pick him up in the free agency. You never really know. If we go and make Paul Poff a trade, possibly. Then left out to the linebacker, they have Al Zalone, 75. Middle linebacker, you have Demario Davis, 82. And Monte Taylor, backup. Right, they have Craig Robertson, 74. Cornerback, we have Marshawn Lattimore, 97 overall. 83 overall, Ken Crawley. 82 overall, Patrick Robinson, and so on. Free safety of Marcus Williams at 89. Strong safety, 77 overall, Jalen Watkins. Kicker-wise, 80 overall, Will Lutz. And punt return, punter wise, they have Thomas Morstead. And the returners are Theo Howard, uh, Boston Scott, and that's basically about it. So their team is very good, though. 
I'm actually kind of scared of what they have because Alvin Kamara is a beast as always, Drew Brees is always a beast, and the receiving core is very good, offensive line is pretty good, their defense is very good with Cameron Jordan coming off the edge, that's kind of scary, especially against their offensive line. So we really got to watch ourselves because this is a team that we cannot go in there with expecting not that much out of them. They did finish lower than us, 10-6 and 6 record, but that means absolutely nothing in the playoffs because it's a whole other beast. So even though we are seem to be a better team on paper when it comes to record, we should not underestimate these Saints, in, especially at home too. They're a very good team at home from like always. So... I just want to see what the record was against teams this year. Just kind of see how they lost those games, those six games. But we'll go find them right there. So the Saints finished 7th overall in the NFL, 10-6 and six record. They had a 3-game winning streak going into that, so they have a 4-game, or 3-game like winning streak going into this. We have a 7-game winning streak, including last week's W against the Packers. So we're a very hot team. They're very, actually they had a week off, so they have a little bit of rest Maybe that's a good thing for them, I guess. But uh, they had four home wins, four home losses. So they're not as good as I thought they were at home. So that's maybe a good thing. Home road wins, they have six and they have two losses. So they're a better team on the road. So that could come to our advantage, I guess. I really have no idea. As for the rest, NFC-wise, eight and four. AFC-wise, they're two and two. So overall, there's a good team. That's all you got to get out of this. Good team. Don't underestimate them. We're a good team, but we're, I mean, our team does have a few hiccups at positions. Like, obviously, at left guard right now, we do have an injury with Michael Jordan. I want to see if they have any major injuries, actually. See if they're having the same kind of injury bug problems as we are. So you have Jeremy Hill, and we have Michael Jordan out. As for the Saints, clean record. They have nobody injured right now. So we're somewhat the... I don't want to call us an underdog, but we kind of are when you think about it. So... Very important game. Saints and Redskins. Our team is looking good. 82 overall. Darius Geis, he's healthy to play. Cam Martin played very well last week, so I'm not really doubting his ability to back him up if there's another injury. Just a very good game coming up here in this divisional round. So like the Green Bay game, I'm, I'm going to be playing this game. I just want to see how, if we can win this one or lose this one. I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. But that will be the next episode, kind of a short one right here, simming, looking over at the playoff team, seeing what's kind of going on, what's shaking in the NFL right now, going into these divisional rounds. But anyway, I guess on this episode off right here, make sure to like and subscribe for more Redskins franchise mode, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.